back to another episode of Fun Friday Ideas with me, Susan Morgan, your speech language pathologist. Today we're going to be getting into communication initiation, what it is, and some ways that we can increase initiation with our children. Thinking about communication, we can think about it in circles. And we open a circle of communication and then it's up to our our partner our parent or even if we're the ones opening it the child to then close that circle of communication and open another one that way we have a synchronous flow a back and forth of our communication opening and closing those circles of communication we need to figure out how to give our children a reason a temptation to open that circle with us to come over to us and request something, protest something, want something to stop, want to share their feelings with us and comment. There's many different purposes to our communication. Different tricks you can do throughout the house that I mentioned in my blog below, such as putting des desired toys into difficult to open containers, where our children, if they want the piggy, they have to come over and ask for help in opening the piggy. Maybe they're going to use a word like open or help. Maybe they're just going to bring it to you and shake it to show that that's the communication that they want. That's the intention that they're trying to get is opening this jar. Another thing you'll notice is that in my office, a lot of my desired toys are kept up. That way our children have to ask to bring them down and have to, again, open them up, tell me what to do in order to get this toy going. All right, so this week, what I recommend for working on initiation is to break out the pillows, break out the, the, the sheets and the couch and the tunnels, and try and build either a sensory obstacle course or a fort. Not only are you working on that initiation by waiting, give them that intention, that temptation to tell you where to put certain toys or how to bounce them on the couch or how to scoop them up in the air and how fast to spin them around before you drop them down. Not only are you giving them that, but you're also working on those six C's of communication. You have your content where you're working on first, next, last, waiting for something and then going to do the next one. You have your big and small, fast and slow, fast, medium, slow, try and put that medium in there if you can. Um, you're also working on your creative thinking and your critical thinking by figuring out, hmm, should we go down the, through the tunnel next or should we crash on the couch? <laughs> so you're letting your kids problem solve what types of activities they want to do next and figuring out how they want to move their body in this obstacle course and directing you through it as well. Get in there, crash on that couch, see if you can fit on the tunnel. Maybe you're too big, which would be really hilarious. And again, there's that content of too big. Mommy is bigger than you. She is too big. <laughs> if you have any siblings that might be able to fit through the tunnel where you can't, oh wow, Johnny's bigger than you. He fits, but mommy's the biggest. She doesn't fit in the tunnel. Again, working on that content. Giving your children the confidence to direct your actions and being there for them through this is really going to help them with initiation across the board. So focus on it with this one activity and you'll find by allowing them to exercise that temptation and that initiation, you'll see them start to do it in other activities as well. So this weekend, let me see those forts. Let me see those, those sensory obstacle courses. In the comments below, tell me what you, what you did and how your child told you what to do and initiated these actions. And let me know maybe what you struggled with when it came to waiting for your child to ask for help or waiting for your child to tell you to go or go faster. Remember, we have to tempt them with different tricks and wait for them to show us with either a wiggle or a sign or a gesture or a word as to what to do next. If we constantly predict what they're going to need, which we're excellent at doing, if we constantly predict what they're going to need, that takes away the temptation for them to communicate. All right, you guys, have a great weekend, and I will see you next week. Bye.